Welcome to Cottbus. Before you start your tour, please accept some piece of good advice to make the guide easier to use. It's possible to interrupt the playback any time by pressing the pause button. If you hear that sound, you should use this function after the direction to the next station are given to you. Please take forward the playback after arriving at the next station. In case you want to resume a passage, you must press and hold the skip button to rewind till the part you want to hear again is arising. Have a nice day in Cottbus with this audio-visual tour. Hey guys! Hey! Here! Here you are! Glück zu! Uh, we say that here. Do you know that welcome? Uh, hey! Hey! Calm down! I have to put my cards to keep my old brain working. The welcome of the millers has its rules in that time the apprentices went off to their travels. There had been various customs on their travels, and the welcome belongs to those customs as well. The apprentice went to the mill stairs, put his stick through the third stair, placed his bag beside, and waited for being welcomed by the eldest apprentice with the words Glück zu. A great deal, you know that word. Greetings from the master and the apprentices, he answered. And at least they had a small talk about everything, everything that makes the world go round. Well, I'm a miller by myself, and I want to tell you everything about my hometown and its strange things and people in my special way. There are a lot of tales cursing around Cottbus, for example about goblins, <laughs> water spritz protecting their fried fish from beers, and above all, <laughs> pay attention to the very permissive Miller's wives. Let us start with that tower. It is called a Spremberg's Tower. Approximately, it was put up in the 14th century and was part of the huge fortification defense for about 400 years. In 1878, a bulwark stood at even that place. The Prussian master of war, Friedrich Schinkel, is responsible for even that building. We are allowed to see that moment. If you have the courage to climb it up, then do so. Oh, today, I'm not in the mood to accompany you. I'm waiting in front of that tower. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there you are again. Oh, yeah. No, no, stop it, stop it. Can't you see that there? There is a sack standing in front. 
It is for carrying, folks. Ah,、uh, come on, come on. Put it on your bikes and come on. Why should I do everything for you? Um. Oh, by the way, I have a good and a bad news for you. You can stroll on slow with that damned sack. <laughs> But you have to stroll by feet through Spremberg Street. Why? What a question! Cause it's forbidden. Spremberg Street is beginning behind that Spremberg's tower. I the nickname Sprem. In past, it was very important trade route to Spremberg, and today it is popular street to go on shopping. Several times a week, there is something like a market, where you can buy various regional goods. Let us go to Castle's Church, standing here, here in the middle of the Sprem, and impossible to miss with its white front and the Sorbian Lake in front. Around 1413, it was mentioned in document as Saint Catherine's Chapel. In 1700, Prince Friedrich III. Gave Saint Catherine's Chapel, which was that time destroyed, until the fundamental walls to the French Reformed community. In past, the church was surrounded by a graveyard and a wall, which was built, and that time the old Catherine's Church still stood. Oh Jesus! Before you ask. Why the church was renamed to Castle's Church? When there is no castle around, I will answer this unsaid question at once. The priest of the court was still allowed to preach inside that church. Okay, for that reason, the name Castle's Church arose. Since 1974, the Castle's Church has been used. As some kind of meeting place. Hey, folks! Now stop talking. We are going to Mills Street. This is the next street we are going in. But before, we gonna make a little short stop.、Mm. Smell this delicious flavor of fresh made cakes. Oh, sucks! Eating is much better than that motherfucker. Sorry, a boring praying for God's sake.、Mm, this flavor is approximately caused by the cake manufactory. Wilhelmine Kluge improved the taste of the cake that way. That she was awarded with the title of the purveyor of the court in 1868. Unfortunately, the poor lady died before participating. But I have some little good news for you. You are allowed to use your bikes now, eh? But hurry up, Fox! If you slumber, I will nick your bike off, 'cause it is rather unfair. We never had any bikes; it was too expensive for us. Well, well, times have changed. Please let us go some meters along to that sculpture of the water sprite. It is standing in front of the Wendt Museum. This museum is a rich fund of knowledge for any facts concerning the tradition of the Sorbian. The museum gives you any further information 
about the history and the culture of the Slavonic as well. That's a very good work. You have the possibility of getting all informations about uh, traditions, the music and the songwriting of the Slavonic. You, you see the figure sitting on that stone? It's a legendary figure in Lusatia. In tales, the water spirit is mm, often friendly. Sometimes he is kidding the people. Sometimes he supports poor fishermen. And sometimes he is unhappy and causes a flood. And sometimes he is a very pretty boy falling in love with a girl of the villages. Ah, what a lucky guy! My grandfather has met a water spirit in his mill. Every day a water spirit came to his mill and made a lot of nonsense and he was very angry about. Every night this damned water spirit prepared some fish in his chimney. Soon the mill smelled rather like fish than like flour. And we are no fishermen. We are millers. For that reason, no farmer has brought his wheat to the mill. Sucks. One day, a man with a big beer arrived in the village my grandfather lived in. He gave a performance for the children. They had a lot of fun because the beer was able to do a lot of things. Afterwards, the man looked for a place for the beer to sleep. But nobody was willing to give some room for this bear. Finally, the man came to the mill and asked for a place to sleep for the beer. My grandfather told him, Yes, you can sleep inside the mill, but the bear has to sleep outside. And so it happened. At night, the water spirit came to the mill again and started to prepare his fish there. <laughs> but the bear smelled the fish and became hungry. He went to the chimney and grabbed for the fish. But now the water spirit became angry and gave him a huge beat on his paw. But the bear took another fish out of the pen. The water spirit gave him a stronger beat on his part. Now the bear became angry and leaped at the water spirit and scratched his claws into the water spirit's body. The water spirit got frightened and sprung into the lake. The next morning, the man and his beer moved away. They wanted to give a performance in the next village. The water spirit appeared. He asked the miller, What kind of cat did you have in your mill? Well, first, my grandfather did not understand a word. But then he answered quickly, Yes, I have bought that cat yesterday. He silently smiled and said, And he has got nine young baby cats last night. Really? The water spirit said, Then I, I don't want to rest here no more. Since that day, the mill lived in peace, because the water spirit never appeared again. <laughs>
Don't panic. There is even possibility to leave your bikes. Now let us go along the castle's hill. On foot of the castle's tower, the foundations point of the whole town. In the 10th century, the winds raised up a Slavonic fortification defense, which was the biggest one of Lusatia. It was suitable for the settlers as a possibility to rest in case of any ambushes and as a resting place for the authorities as well. Later on, it became the base of all royal authorities in the local area. Today the tower is nicknamed Courts Tower, cause the buildings of the Courts authorities are situated nearby. Severally changed in history. For example, in 1877 the new Renaissance building of the primary and the secondary chamber of court was built. Afterwards, the old-fashioned court's tower was rebuilt and in case of its top, completely changed. Today, the tower is about 46 meters high. Uh, by the way, during the Middle Ages, a pillory was placed on the market's place. The pillory <laughs> was a tool for torturing people. <coughs> Predominantly, it was the torture of public shame the convicted man or woman had to suffer. <laughs> the people were allowed to throw all kinds of things at him or her. And even in some case the people were allowed to beat them up. <laughs> that was fun, but not for them. Hey, 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 wait a moment. I have ever been an honest miller. And thus I have never stolen any kind of wheat from my customers. I have been a visitor all the times. Mm. Let's go back to our bikes. We are strolling to the left and straight on to the main street. From that point you can see the beautiful river Spree. Then keep yourself to the left, towards the next traffic lights crossing. Then go straight forward and turn to the left hand of the river. Now we have to go for a little walk. But it's not a great burden for us, because the landscape is really impressive. I promise you. And you have no effort to enjoy this walk. But follow the way strictly straight on towards the mill. We call it in German Spreewehrmühle. I am very astonished how comfortable the all-day life is organized today. Water is no longer requested as a natural power because it flows out of a water tap and afterwards into the drain. For that reason, it is no surprise that many towns are located beside a river, well, such as Cottbus is too. They are used for all matters. <laughs> of trade, of defense, of production, of nursery, of cattle, and finally, yeah, for washing. By the way, it is easy to see that water has a great importance for the people and to the people. 
About 4,000 years ago, some kind of early millstone technology was recognizable. Even the Assyrians and the Egyptians used this technology. I would never have been a miller if these stones would have stayed completely unknown. Up to the industrialization, the mill was the most important machine to the benefit of mankind. During the centuries, mechanic mills emerged, which had been emerged by air, water, electric power and even steam-driven engine. Inspired by this lightning of work, for example by water engine, a Roman architect named Vitruvius wrote a poem. Please, my beloved ladies working hard in the mills, please stop making efforts. Now, go sleep and let the birds sing the night away. Thus, Ceres had instructed the Nejates to do your work. And they go ahead, emerging the wheels and driving the waves through the big mills. Uh, by the way, the Nejates are water nymphs and are a symbol for water power in general. The mills of the Middle Ages had belonged to the property of the secular and the cleric authorities. It is stated in a document called, let me spell it in German, Saxonspiegel. In English uh, it sounds like Saxon mirror. You know that word. It is one of the eldest statue book in German language that the streets, the mills, the pluffs and the churches and cathedrals are especially protected by the royal authorities. And it has even contained a special right of asylum for convicts inside the mill's walls. Mm, it was stated this, this way. Mm, let me spell it for you. All murders are those robbing and destroying a church a churchyard, a mill, a plough, should be punished by, by breaking on a wheel. Oh, I said, horrible, horrible, horrible. The convicted was put on a wheel and by rolling that wheel, all of the convict's bones were completely broken. Now I have to tell you a word about the mill's force. The local authorities told the people which mill was responsible for them and where they had to put their wheat and their corn. The constitution for the miller's society was introduced in 1545. Anyone offending against this law by putting this wheat to another mill was punished with losing his horse, his wagon and the whole wheat and corn. <laughs> That's a real shit. But this law was abolished around 1845. Now, the Spreewehr mill is not very far away, uh, you know, Spreewehr mühle. Uh, simply stroll on the way, di direct line, until you can hear the sound of the water. We have reached our goal! 
We can give up this bloody sack. Oh, I think that we are allowed to give us a little break. Oh, Glück zu, Mr. Miller. Up to the mm, 14th century, they have used wheels putting the water on the veins from below. Later, they used wheels. The water was rushing from upwards, from above, you know. For that purpose, they have built a weir to store the water. Really, really hard work. Respect. The official Huber requested the permission for building a mill built on stilts. <laughs> In 1801, the mill was ready to use. Originally, it was stipulated as a mill for Pearl Burley, but even millet, oil, wheat and corn could be milled. At its best, about two and a half lots could be factored, but only in case the river had enough water for use. Around 1824, my colleague built a Dutch windmill. But it was not successful. It was put to compulsory after 40 years. Ah, what a pity. A man called Johann Christian Löcher bought it and he established a restaurant inside the mill's rooms for the first time. During the next years, the owners of the mill have changed several times. But unfortunately, the restaurant was closed by one of these owners. In 1876, a very mysterious fire destroyed the Dutch mill that way that it was not worth rebuilding another time. It was murmured that the miller has put the mill on fire to take the money of the insurance. Around the 19th century, the last private owner sold the mill to the town of Cottbus. The restaurant was opened up again and regarded as his main profession. In 1959, the mill was completely closed. Only the restaurant was still kept up. In 1960, the curators of historic monuments in Dresden awarded it with the title of a Monument of Historic and Technical Value. 26 years later, it could be presented to the public as a technical monument. In 2007, engaged citizens met and concluded to establish the Organization for the Preservation of the Historic Mill. It is worth, in any case, to visit the rooms of the mill. Now, we have a little time left, so we can take a look at the big spree wear. You are able to hear it before you are able to see it. Uh, by the way, there is one tale to tell you about the devil's wear. The Count Hans reigned from 1535 to 1571 and he, he made a contract with the devil. He said, you have to put up a weir from Pites to Cottbus for me. And the devil did it. 
And for that reason, the way between the lakes of Pites were named Devil's Weir. <laughs> I have rather sympathy for the devil. The Count said, you have to dig a water course from the Spree River to the Malks of Pites. Hmm. The devil pluffed with black cattle. But then he was thrown into the lake, which was named, huh? yeah, Devil's Lake since that day. But the way running underground from Cottbus to Pites is still haunted. If you enter the way under the Conwick's church with a burning light, the <laughs> devil spits it out at once. <laughs> Now, let us stop gossiping, cause I want to show you my personal mill. By the way, we are passing very interesting sights. Now we are strolling along the river to town, crossing the small wooden bridge. That's the same way we came in. Do you see it? And by crossing the next bridge, we are changing the side of the river, turning ourselves to the right hand. Please go this way by feet. By the way, as some kind of plastered goody, I'm telling you something about my personal profession. <laughs> how the two proverbs, the mills clacking, and that guy who comes first is that guy who mills first, arise? Well, a small stick was responsible for that clacking, which is moved automatically by the turning wheels of the mill. And by the way, it was beaten on the sack with the floor inside. The floor was really beaten out by that power. The bran was left inside the sack and felt throughout an opening into a box. <laughs> and this box was named <laughs> Kleiekotze by the public. <laughs> and the proverb the mills clacking emerged with that sound of rhythm. Es klappe die Mühle am rauschenden Bach, tip tap, tip tap. Bei Tag und bei Nacht ist die Mühle stets wach, tip tap, tip tap. Er malet das Korn zu dem kräftigen Brot und haben wir dieses, so hat's keine Not. Tip tap, tip tap, tip tap. Perhaps you are able to imagine the sense of the proverb. That guy who comes first is that guy who mills first. In every region, there was a regulation of milling. The mill was forced to run the mill properly and to keep away any damage from the customer's goods. Various methods to enlarge the miller's part of the customer's wheat were stated and prohibited the same time. For example, little holes in the sacks and other parts of the mill where the flour was falling down and could have been put up by the miller afterwards. In any case, the miller was obliged to give the same comfort to all his customers without taking any special benefits from them. Now we are following the river to the Karl Blechen Park. For that reason you can go by bike to Sando Street and cross it. Passing a keys area 
for the famous boats of the so-called Spreewald. Oh, sucks. This, this is really heavy. I'm working with crops. And the one and only stick I'm working with is... <clears throat> Sorry, ladies, but that's even life. But my lady forced me to look in those books. And that is the result when you have seen a school from inside and married too early. But there is one advantage. I can tell you a little word about that guy Karl Blechen, which was one of the most important artists in the decade of realism. He was impressed by the sunny Italian landscape and found to a new kind of looking and painting. Recommended by Schinkel, he became professor for landscape painting on the Academy in Berlin in 1831. And during the years, many exhibitions have been promoted where the public was allowed to look in his creation. He has made many journeys to the Harz Mountains, to Dresden and even to Paris. Well, that's unfair. I've never been to Paris. That's really... Sorry. His art does something the whole art of Berlin never did. It is full of flowers, some kind of vegetables, only useful for feeding my rabbits. His best part of creation seems to be a miracle. And for me, it's a rather miracle that I can tell you so many things about this strange, weird guy. Thank you, my old Cam. In 1840, he had a brainstorm and died on the 23rd of July, the same year. And this park has taken his name to honor his importance. At the next bridge, with the orange-colored railing, it goes to the Mills Island and to the next park, named Goethe's Park. The Mills Island is one of the most beautiful places in the whole town. You are only able to estimate the original course of the Spree River. It is said that the original course of that Spree Delta goes to north-south direction. The area of the river has been changed regularly by the high tides. Some kind of shelf was growing on the left and right riverside. And there had been a lot of trees, willows, undergrowths and meadows alongside the whole river. It was only possible to travel on the river with very, very small kinds of boats. In past, the river was crowded with fish and crabs. Hey, but crabs remind me to the coat of arms of the town of Cottbus. Uh, do you know it? The heraldic animal of Cottbus is a crab. That shows us its relation to the river of Spree. On a Sunday in 1595, there was a short cold spell, caused by a long period of snowing and the following thaw. They had a high tide and all bridges were destroyed in only one Sunday. There had been even several breakthroughs that time. 
Therefore, the water mills on Mills Island have been dried for days. <laughs> Please follow the main way. If you can hear the sound of the flowing water, we are not far away from the power station. Please go up the stairs up to the bridge. From that point, you can see Wilhelm's Mill and the power station as well. <music> The eldest mill, the town's mill, was first stated in document in 1435. It contained of two mills. You can read within the first note of the build of these mills. With reason of the mill we had a little drink on the mill and its successful building. Around 1445, Reinhard of Cottbus sold the area, the people and the town of Cottbus to Friedrich II for 5,000 score of Groschen. <laughs> that was possible that time. Half of the mills of Cottbus went directly into the property of that king of Prussia. Ten years later, the other half went into the property of the Brandenburg dynasty. Around 1882, the town's mill has been damaged by many cases of fire. So the district's authority thought about the necessity of a power station instead of building a second mill. In 1903, the first power station was built and the same year the tram was introduced. Electric power reminds me of no electric power in the Middle Ages. <laughs> you can think of the mills being powerful all the time. Well, because any kind of <clears throat> venereal sins could be practiced without any repression. The erotic dreams of the men were pushed by showing mm, a very vulgar impression of the miller's wife. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes she was shown as a symbol of vulgarity. Oh, sucks. Such a bullshit. For example, a very special song written by Schubert tells us about the beauty of the miller's wife being not able to set the flesh of her husband on fire because of unfaithfulness. Another example is the poem of Thomas Murner. Let me spell it to you. The story I have now laid about abilities of maid that can, if you are once alone, scratch your skin from every bone and may let you sing songs of a fool when she may lick your special... Um, <coughs> no... Come on, let ourselves cool down <clears throat> by walking to the <clears throat> Wilhelm's Mill. And let me tell you about the special tools. Oh shit, how embarrassing. Um, there are ladies in the crowd. Let me tell you something about that mill. <laughs> The builders of the mills had been either millers or craftsmen. Therefore, they have been called so mill doctors. Because they have been called in any case of damage to repair. For that reason, you can say, 
We are something like technical all-made men. The all-day life of a miller was really, really hard. Naturally, the mills were abandoned on low water, wind, harvests, high tides, storm, and even ice. He has never had any kind of time for recreation at all. Beside the town's mill, also the Tellis mill was located on the mill's island. It was stated in document the first time in 1664, and the clothing mill was documentary stated as property of the country's authorities in 1404. Felt was used for milling the clothes. By using felt, they have produced a special kind of clothes by felting the materials. This kind of production was used in a special kind of mill, which was necessary. The material was put into rushing water and then beaten up with heavy hammers. The period of production of the ten mill was about 1435. The ten mill was responsible for the production of the substances used for tanning the material. Especially the bark of spruces and oak trees from the tan woods had been used for tanning the leather and fur because it contained a lot of very, very suitable acid for tanning. And in the 1880s, the mill fell into disrepair, caused by the decrease of the tanner trade. Finally, <laughs> the mill was pulled down in 1903. Oh, what a shit! The White Tanner's Mill, later renamed to Wilhelm's Mill, was built the same time with the Tanner's Mill. She was located beyond the Tanner's Mill that one wheel was standing after the other. In 1801, she was completely destroyed by fire and rebuilt for the amount of 2,900 Thaler. Oh, good guys. About 1833, it fell into disrepair for a short time. And then it was completely pulled down. After that, a massive three-floor high building was raised up and used for tanning clothes. Finally, there was only one 78-year-old miller and an enormous lack of apprentices. The old Wilhelm's mill was closed down the same time. Here inside the area of the so-called Uferstraße heading Wilhelm's mill you discover in my opinion, one of the best points of the whole tour. These are some of the eldest buildings, the so-called tenors' houses. And they are still in use as a place for living and recreation. The Tenors' Houses are half-timbered buildings in the style of the Middle Ages, used for storing the several furs and skins. If you have a look on the three Tenors' Houses at the Mills Moat, you might get the impression of a very romantic, cozy and beautiful lifetime of the craftsman. <laughs> what a fool! Fresh air? <laughs> Not really. For bathing the fur, 
They had to use the excrements. You can say also shit from chicken, dogs and doves. A lot of water was completely condemned by the several steps of production, for example by cleaning and washing out the fur. The work with the pure fur was often the reason for deadly intoxication with a stuff called anthrax. The direct work with extremely cold water caused cuffs and sneezes as well as rheumatism beyond the workers. The horrible smell of the ten was the reason for instructing the tenors to settle down outside the city wall. The city plan of 1720 shows us that there had been tenneries on the Mills Island a long, long time ago. <laughs> Lucky circumstance that I am a miller instead of a tenor and thus really far away from that horrible smell of bullshit. Come on, let us go on. Take your bike. Do not care, it's not forbidden. And stroll alongside this street passing the power station. Nowadays, let me say that, it is a very striking museum, but please leave it aside. Cross the main street and keep yourself to the right riverside. Then go straight along till the water sounds of the weir arise inside your ears. Please cross the bridge and follow the right way into the park. Some meters later, you can discover the observatory on the left hand. Afterwards, please stroll straight on to the big bridge. There you are, and now you have to cross it. It is good circumstance for you that you do not have this damned sack on your shoulder. Inside the Elias Parks area, you can rest a little and leave your bike, and do not panic. It's still not forbidden. The Elias Park was built in 1902 and was a foundation of the district's authority Elias. It was redecorated in 1995 and in summertime the meadows are crowded with people. The beautiful area for playing and making sports are very popular in Cottbus. Hey folks, you had enough time to rest? Move your bones and get your socks and bikes up and stroll alongside the stadium's area to this great entrance door over there on the right side. Please drive through and keep yourselves to the left upwards the driveway, entering the town circle street. On the way, please drive towards the traffic lights, then turn to the right way, towards the next driveway, down to the cyclist's path called Spreedam. Please stroll on some miles, heading a street called Hermann Löhnsstraße. I'll give you good advice, pay attention to the street signs, cause these signs especially make for cyclists, will show you the way on the left hand to the Count's Mill. The Count's Mill received its name from the master, the Count. The first reasonable document 
where the mill is stated on is from 1543, but it surely existed long time before, because it is stated in an official document. Uh, ple please let me read this up. Our Royal Highness Friedrich is giving the Count's Mill mm, and the area about a quarter of a mile away from Cottbus to Otto von Slaven and his wife for all their lifetime. Ugh. In 1555 the constitution for millers was introduced. Many farmers had a long way to go because the constitution forced them to mill their wheat at the count's mill. <laughs> It was possible that the farmers had spent their whole day with strolling to this mill. About 200 years ago, the millers started their engagement in keeping up an own restaurant. And the people appreciated it with their consumption of about 230 tons of beer per year. <laughs> yeah, for a good man, a good beer is worthwhile drinking. <sighs> Did you know that the mill was hunted by a goblin? Well, a very tricky guy. In past, the Count's Mill was located far away from Cottbus and it was often damaged by high tide and tidal waves. And some parts were completely destroyed. The water supply was often irregular or polluted by leaves, mud and knots and thus the all-day life of the tenors was very hot. <laughs> Then it was said the damned goblin was haunting the mill. <laughs> nobody knows what he looks like because nobody has ever seen him before. But it is said that he is very small and he is wearing a red cap. There was a tale saying that the Marstaller, the first owner of the mill, has sent him to the people and someday you can hear his laugh in the story. In 1845, the mill got a tan machine from England. And the god was fed up with the never-ending noise of this machine. He went down to the river on a small piece of wood. But then he stumbled and fell into the river and was drowned. Only his red cap was jumping up and down on the river's waves for a while. Poor guy, now he's completely screwed. Who cares? His problem, not ours. Now it is not far away from the mill of Madlow. Please stroll along, cross the small bridge. Afterwards, on direct way to the Oaks Parks area. Inside that area, please follow the plastered path strictly. If you do so, you will find to a stony bridge decorated with striking and real stylish pots. My fellows in, off and around Cottbus nicknamed the bridge Jubilee's Bridge. Do not ask me why. I am not Methuselah. Uh, by the way, you have to cross it. It's not forbidden. 
afterwards, follow the path straight on, past the following intersection, heeding the lake of Madlow, situated inside the habitat of Brandenburg. By the way, it's time to rest, folks. I'm not Methuselah, but my bones feel like that. At least 200 years old. Ugh. There is an intriguing tale about the lake. And if you don't mind, I will tell it to you. During the first half of the 19th century, there was a huge swamp on the area of the Lake of Madlo, where many snakes lived in. Not very big ones, but local kinds, for example, vipers and grass snakes. There had been many fights between the snakes, but for most, a 1.50 meter long viper has one. It had a crown on his head. And when it was disturbed by the farmers, it has cold up and hissed. It has been said that many people have drowned in that swamp. With its sound, the snake has tempted young boys into the dangerous areas of this swamp. Caused by the regulation of the river, by weirs it almost dried out. But even if the fairy tale of the snake remained, the snake itself disappeared. After the First World War, the snake's heritage was awarded with a summer house with two crossed snake heads on its top. <laughs> Well, folks, this is it. Time to start again. Even Methuselah had his bones not only just for fun, but instead of his faith, we have to stroll on our bikes to the left among the lake's base sideway. After a short distance, you will find a sign showing the way to the mill of Kutzeburg. By following that way, you will discover the Church of Madlow. And I give you good advice of spending a little time for looking at this special site. The Church of Madlow, which is still named Church of St. Martin, is situated on a very beautiful way beside the Spree River. Perhaps you are wondering about the church not being situated in the center of Madlo. Well, the Lutki are responsible for that. The Lutki are very funny people, predominantly living on the sandy hills of Lusatia. Beside the loneliness, they are very polite and helpful. They are giving help to the people when they have problems concerning their work on the fields and on the inside of the farms. <laughs> very helpful people. When the Sorbs had been reformed to the Christian church, they wanted to raise their church on the area of the pagan sacrificial altar and brought the material to that place. At night, the Lutki came on a court with black cattle and brought the material to a place outside the village. The following day, the priest instructed the people to bring the material back to that place. Mm, but nevertheless, the Lutki came back 
I brought the material to that place outside the village again. Yeah, finally, the people of Martlow were forced to build their church outside the village. Victory! <laughs> Now we are driving about 100 meters along to Madlow's Mill. You cannot miss it, due to the impressing cylindrical grain silo in front. Well guys, home sweet home. Madlow's Mill, also named Madelmühle was built in the last half of the 15th century and has started production in 1495. Only one year later, the district's authorities bought the mill from the prince. But that mill was on a quite disadvantage due to its location. The prince obliged the people of Cottbus not to grind their wheat in the mill of Madlow. Only for citizens. Cottbus dogs are not allowed. Around 1665, the mill had come up with three millstones, four pounding millets and one cutting mill. If you believe it or not, but the mill was leased by me in 1771. It was the property of our family till 1908. During several years, my mill was enlarged by a grist and oil mill, a grain cleaning plant and an engine responsible for producing instant goods. By the way, the red building has been raised as a new kind of grist mill by my family. Unfortunately, on the 16th of April in 1945, the mill was seriously damaged by a bomb attack. After the war, the mill was fixed for assuring a daily production of nine tons of wheat. In 1965, the cutting and oil mill were closed down and 30 years later, the production stopped completely and profoundly. In 2002, the Red Mill building was reconstructed as an office building. Please let us stroll through the beautiful landscape and for visiting the neighbors. Please pass the mill from the right side and follow the path and cross the bridge. Please pay attention when passing the main street and straightforward you enter the way to Kurzeburg's mill. Please keep yourself on the left side. And finally, after a beautiful stroll through the trees of green, you will arrive at Kurzeburg's mill. The Kurzeburg mill was documentary stated for the first time in 1555 by the master of Galinchen. The family of Pückler has been the owners of the estate of Galinchen till 1825. The mill was bought by a man called what? Runsch. What a name! Who wanted to give the mill to his brother-in-law for lease. Friedrich II, king of Prussia, confirmed the treatment and thus it has been guilty up to the 20th century. 
But during the 19th century, the industrialization took a lot of influence on the country. The Draper's Guild bought the mill and emerged at 10 following the Netherlands example. 66 years later, the production submerged and the mill was pulled down completely. Now, a shop for biologic products, a restaurant, a hotel and even a rider's estate emerged on the area of the mill. Today, a lot of families from all around Cottbus come to enjoy the urban life there and many different events such as derbies and Brandenburg's Urban Party. These are promoted regularly. Well, folks, all is said and done. And it's not forbidden for me to say it was a real fun to give you a short glimpse into my work and the special points of Mills and Town's history. I hope you will visit me in Cottbus. I promise you that I will give you a special package of wheat no one should know about. And let me tell you a warm goodbye. And let me say, do not talk to goblins and other strange people. <laughs> Sorry, I am talking too much. I say, see you. I don't know where, and I don't know when. Glück zu!